as a full-time RVer, there's a lot of maintenance to keep your rig performing properly, just like there is in sticks and bricks. And today, I wanna to share with you a simple maintenance that you can do easily that will preserve the performance and the life of your hot water heater. And that is to change out the anno rod. Now, you may have to do this in your old sticks and bricks, but you don't do it as often because of the size of the hot water tank. Our hot water heater here is only 10 gallons, and we've been in about eight states and maybe 30 or 40 campgrounds, and you never know the quality of your water. Now, you might ask yourself, what is an anno rod? An anno rod is a rod of metal made of magnesium and aluminum that is a sacrificial tool that helps preserve the life of your hot water heater. What it does is it attracts lime, calcium, iron, and other mineral deposits to the rod and corrodes and eats away the rod. So it's not doing that to either your hot water heater or the element protecting your hot water heater. Now, when is a good time to change an anno rod? Well, manufacturers typically say every year or once a year, but if you are a full-time RV family and you travel quite frequently, you might need to do it as often as every six months. So let me show you what an anno rod is and how you change it. Hi, we are Cheryl and John. We sold our home and business in March 2020 and set out to live life differently, traveling the country in an RV with our twin daughters, Brighton and Daisy. We believe the best days are always ahead of us, even in good times. Thank you for joining us as we inspire others to seek the bright days ahead. Okay, one of the steps that you need to do before you get started on this project is make sure that your hot water heater is off. So notice this is our electric hot water heater. This is our gas, it's already off, but this is our electric, so that's on, that's off. So they're both in the off position now. Okay, and now I'm gonna drain all the hot water out. So I've already started a little wash and I'm just doing dishes. So I'm gonna make sure the hot water, I've turned the faucet to hot and it's already not very hot. I've drained a lot of it out. So we're doing this because you don't wanna scald yourself. So as soon as it runs cold, then you know that you have depleted all the hot water in the hot water heater. Let's review some of the tools that you'll need for this project. The first is the anno rod. And remember, this is a rod, a sacrificial rod, it kind of reminds me of Jesus, um, of magnesium and aluminum. And so it will use the uh, electronically charged to attract lime and calcium and iron to this rod and corrode it instead of your heating element. I just ordered it on Amazon. It came as a two pack with a little bit of plumber's tape. So I'll link the link below. Another thing is this is a clean out wand and so I will put that link below. We also got it off Amazon but it goes in there and it squirts out your hot water heater and gets extra sediment that's down in the bottom out. You'll also need a socket wrench and your socket which we have a one, um, ours is a one and one sixteenth socket. So you'll need this and you can see it fits in the anode rod. Okay, we had a couple steps inside and that was to turn off the electric hot water heater and then drain our hot water. Our next step is to turn off the water at your water source. So I've now turned off the water at my water source. Next, we'll be relieving the pressure. So let me show you how to do that. Now, as you recall, we already drained all the hot water out of our hot water heater. So I've turned on my faucets here and I'm just gonna relieve the pressure. So we should see this stream stop in just a minute. Okay, so now all the water pressure is out of the system. We're gonna try it one more place and I'll show you on that hot water heater where you relieve the pressure. Now we come over to our hot water heater. This is our furnace down here and this is our hot water heater. It's a 10 gallon hot water heater. So you turn your knob to line it up and you lift this off and there's your hot water heater. Now we've already relieved pressure at the hose and the other place to relieve pressure is right here at the hot water heater. So we turn this off and you can see just a little bit dripping and it's not hot. So that means it's not gonna burn or scald me because we've already drained all the hot water out. Leave that open and it's drained. So now we should have all the water drained out of the pressure, excuse me, all the pressure is now off the hot water heater. So now we're going to relieve, 
remove our anode rod. When we remove this rod, more water will fall out. Probably more than my bucket, but I do have a bucket to show you the sediment that comes out and then the rest is gonna drain on the ground. Remember, it's fresh water, so it's okay to be on the ground. Okay. okay. Now I simply put the socket on the anode rod and start removing it. And you can see all that water coming out. And it's draining. As a reminder, this is fresh water, so I may not catch it all in my bucket. So this fresh water, it's okay to go on the ground. And we're in a great sandy area, so it absorbs quickly. So we'll let that drain, and then I'll show you our next step. So now we've drained all of the water out of our hot water heater, and you can see this is what our old anode rod looks like. It's been about six months, and it looks like it's time. So we last changed it six months ago, and that's been lots of states, campgrounds, and different water. And you can see some of the sediment that we caught as well. So let's compare it to our new one. Again, it's supposed to attract all those chemicals to it and have it deteriorate. That's why it's called a sacrificial rod versus your hot water heater or element. So it's definitely time to replace it. So now we're gonna put in the new one. But before we do that, we wanna rinse out any old sediment that's in there. That way it's as clean as can be and you're filling it full of water versus having, you know, if you have a lot of sediment in there, then maybe it's only nine and a half gallons versus a 10 gallon tank. And that's how you can kind of tell that maybe it's time to change your anode rod is your hot water feels like it's running out sooner than it used to. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna spray this out and really get it cleaned out. Okay, we've connected our cleaning rod to our hose and we turn back on our fresh water. And so now this is just with a simple turn on and you can tell it has a lot of pressure. So I'm gonna stick it in here and then I'm gonna do a sweeping motion and pull it out as we clean it. So get in there and you can see, do you see all that sediment coming out? Ugh, oh yeah, look at all that sediment. Turn it around upside down and you keep doing this until you start to see your water run clear so it could take several several tries and a few minutes to really get it clean Okay, we just finished cleaning out the hot water heater with our cleaning rod. And now we're just gonna kind of wipe it down while we're in here to keep it in good condition so it's not too dirty. We wanna keep it, you can see there's a little bit of dirt or grime just from the road. So we're gonna wipe this all down and get it clean. Got that all cleaned out. Okay, it's looking good. I'll have my valet clean the rest of the rig later. Now we're gonna use our plumber's tape to create a seal so no water leaks out around the anode rod. And I'm gonna do this a couple times with America, husband, and dad watching, which he's the one who taught me how to do this. Not change the anode rod, but plumber's tape. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this back in and go ahead and finger thumb screw it because it could be a little hard like to get it threaded. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I'm gonna get that threaded before I tighten it up. So now I have it hand tightened and now I'm gonna use my socket wrench to tighten it. And you don't wanna over tighten it. So it only should be a couple, a couple turns to get it really nice and tight. And you might still see some of it sticking out a little bit, but we did before. So it's now in and tight. Okay, so we now have this tight. We're gonna open this up to see if we have any pressure on it. Nothing's leaking out, there's no pressure. We're gonna close this because now we're gonna create pressure when we fill up the hot water heater. Now, don't 
turn on your hot water heater too fast. You want to give the system time to completely fill up, then turn on your hot water heater. I know we're all very excited to go take a shower, but you don't want to burn up your element, so you need to wait a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our water now. Okay, now I'm going to use my shower hose with hot water only to see if we're filling up our tank. So you can see only a little bit of water is coming up. As it fills up, this stream is going to get greater. So we're just waiting for it to fill up. I can hear it filling up. So you can see it's getting a little bit better. All right, so now I heard it stop making its noises, so I think it's full. We check the pressure, and sure enough, there's a little water coming out here, so we should have water here. It's not hot, because we haven't turned on the hot water heater yet. Now you only have the hot on because you're demanding hot water. If you turn the cold on, it's already filling up with cold. But what you're trying to do is fill up your hot water heater with hot. So we have the hot on. There's a little bit of air still. But now it's coming out. So our hot water tank is now full. So now that we have like some streams coming out, it's full or almost full. Again, this is just the hot water that I'm asking for. It's not hot yet because we haven't turned on the hot water heater. Okay, now's the time that you can turn on your hot water heater because the hot water tank is now full and the element is immersed in water. And so now we can go turn on that hot water heater. Don't forget, or the husband gets really mad. And you'll have a hot, water, a hot shower in a few minutes. Here's a little quick tip. If you need hot water faster, you can turn on both your electric and your gas. They're two different heating elements and I'll heat up the water faster. Now you'll wanna turn your gas off so you're not wasting gas, but go ahead and turn on both, then I'll hurry up and heat up that hot water and you'll have a faster shower. Okay, here's another quick tip. If you have one of these shower hoses outside is don't forget to turn off the faucets. When you have pressure up against it, you don't know if the water's on or off. Um, with both the hot and the cold water faucets on and left on, it can mix with your hot water. So you don't get hot water out of your faucets because all that water's mixing. It happened to us and we thought we had a bad hot water heater. No, actually, it was just we left our faucets on. So now we always do a test. We turn off our faucets, we bleed the line, now we don't have pressure, so now the hot water is not competing with anything else in the system. Hey, and that's it. We are gonna write down when we change this in our maintenance log so we know to do this in about six months. But this was a quick maintenance tip on how to help protect the life of your hot water heater and preserve it for all those hot showers. Hey, we hope you enjoyed our little maintenance tip by Bright Days Ahead, and we thank all our subscribers that continue to watch us week after week. And if you're not a subscriber, we'd love for you to join the BDA family.